On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are back in the shop with the LS6 that's going in the Corvette. And of course the old LS1 is sitting right over there and we need to get everything swapped over from that to this. We got a lot of it done on the last episode, a bunch of those things ready to go. Today we have to finish cleaning this engine up. That was really our holdup. And then we should have everything switched over. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo, and like I said, I'm here with Eric. It's the first, okay, it's like the third nice day of the year, I would say. The first 70 degree day of the year. And uh, that means we can get this thing outside and give it a rinse off to knock off just a little bit of oil residue that's on it, clutch dust on the back. And that's also gonna let us finish getting all the parts off of the old engine onto this engine. So that was kind of our holdup. It's been snowing and freezing here. So of course there's still like layers of snow and ice outside, even though it's this nice. Uh, we're gonna get it knocked out either way. So let's just jump right in. First things first, we gotta put our valve covers back on. So a quick clean up with the brake clean here. Obviously we've got uh, the valve covers. We cleaned those in the last episode. We've got the new gaskets installed and this is starting to look, every minute I work on this engine, I just get more and more excited about how nice this thing is gonna be. Just sent brake clean all over the floor. Getting these things lined up, always fun. They should be close every time. There we go, we got it. Just a wiggle. All right, one valve cover on. We're not gonna like final tighten these. We're just gonna kind of run them down so that it's keeping the water out while I wash the engine. That's obviously the main thing here. And now we got one more and we can get this thing outside. We got valve covers. This engine stand doesn't roll. Which door are you going, huh? We're going all the way over there. <clears throat> I think we should just fork it because this engine stand kind of rolls. How's your Fortnite, Scott? Good deal. I'm gonna go in Have you been playing for a Fortnite? Have you been playing it for a Fortnite? Don't know what Fortnite is. <laughs> a few minutes later. Hand time. So, let's just drop all this everywhere. Engine's still a little bit wet from getting it all cleaned up. Let's see, we got a couple bolts holding this thing on. Still. This thing should just fall right off of here. I, I expect it to. There it goes. I knew it was gonna be heavy. All right. Ooh, still a little bit of oil in there. Time to clean up our mating surface and then we'll do a wipe down and get the pan off the other engine. Man, I thought I dried this thing off super well, but there's still water just flinging everywhere. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pull the pan off this one. It probably has a little bit of oil in it still, so it's gonna be a little bit more fun than the last one, uh, but we should have it off here in just a moment. Wow, these are tight. Factory seal, I guess. Tight and leaky. So this one here is the critical one. Holding on all the uh, transmission cooler lines. So that one's gotta move. Oop. I knew I didn't have those fully empty. Went and made a mess. Last two bolts. Here we go. It feels like there's quite a bit of oil in here, but it's really not that much. It's still milky. That's a lot of milk after that last oil change. You guys can see it, that's like light brown, nasty oil. Now that the pan is off the new engine, we're finding more and more good things as we keep going. It just gets better and better. It's got a double roller retirement chain in there. Fancy, fancy. More views of the studs. We'll be able to look into the, well, we can look into the ports now. You can see they've been wiped out, but good looking cathedral heads. And the 799s are the same as the 243, basically, which is a really good head. They call the 799 or the 707, something like that. They say this is the hallowed head. It is the one you want. 
And the old ones, of course, are not even close. A53s or something. Yeah, one of the worst flowing heads, if I remember right. So this is a this is a heck of a build. Eric's grabbing the uh, water temp over there. We're gonna make an O'Reilly's run because there's no uh, pan pickup in this engine. And of course the pickup needs to go right there and it needs a new O-ring. So we've got oil pressure and we're probably gonna move the windage tray as well. It looks like that was, uh, that was grabbed. Just a few other things we gotta get knocked out. We made an O'Reilly's run, picked up the old 72401. Uh, what we need to do now is check windage tray clearance. The windage tray is on and bolted up. And before I run through and torque those bolts, I want to spin the engine over quite a few times. I just realized we need to pull the spark plugs too. So I'm gonna grab a spark plug socket, yank those, and then we're gonna start cranking this thing over so we can make sure the crank and the rods aren't hitting the windage tray on the way around. So we'll just give it a couple of rotations here in just a moment. And I'm gonna try to look down through the tray. You can see where that light is. I know it won't focus, but go ahead. We're not even close. Keep going. Oh yeah, I think it's perfect. Cool. Good. Yeah, I think so. Uh, let's install the oil pump pickup and tighten down the windage tray bolts and we're ready to do the pan. And the pan is over there clean. It looks really clean, honestly. So, oh, we're ready to put this pan back on too. Yeah. So once the pan came off, it came over here to the solvent tank and now looks brand new. Obviously this is the, the smart clean solution there that's brown. So we'll wipe it off the brake clean and I think all the metal will look as good as the day was built. All right, we are underneath here. Obviously everything worked out great with our uh, windage tray check, clearance check there. So now for the fun part, it's getting this uh, pickup tube O-ring to seat. Uh, it's getting close. <laughs> These things are always fun to get in there. I'm gonna go ahead and start the bolt so we've got something to work against. And then we'll get it pushed in. Time for our new pan gasket. Any, no special instructions on here. So the factory ones, of course, are riveted in. These are the rivet holes right there and right there. We're not gonna put the rivets back in because the bolts will hold the thing on just fine. So this goes on here like so. Done, ready to, ready to run, that's all it needed. You can see it's been seriously cleaned up inside. The pan looks brand new and I think, I think we are good to go. Oh, <laughs> that one bolt that I thought was trapped, right? The one that was a nightmare? It has a, there's a hole cut all the way through the whole pan. I forgot about that. Oh man, my bad. Sorry, Eric. I had Eric take it out with a ratchet wrench and it took forever, but I think we're ready. Like that's it. Windage trays checks out everything. Windage tray torqued 18 foot pounds, oil pickup tube, um, eight. Eight, yeah. And so that's good to go. You know, be careful when you do that. Don't pinch the O-ring. We spent a ton of time making sure it was good, good. This is the last piece that needs to come off this engine. I just did a visual walk around of both engines and I think we've got every bolt that needs to be on this engine on it already. So this little clip right here holds the wire harness to the bottom of the engine. Oh yeah, and it's angled like this. So we're gonna maintain the angle, bring it over here and I think that's the angle. That's That's gotta be it right there. That's it, it's tight. Cool. Uh, we're gonna move our lift plate onto this engine now and put the engine back in the cradle. And well, the old engine needs to go on the pallet. So I guess we're gonna actually move that engine over there first, then get busy sticking this thing in. All right, we're gonna drop our engine stand and we are ready to get this thing into the cradle. So, uh, up, lift, lift. You gotta take all the weight. Keep going. Hey, there you are. All right, we're clear. You're almost free. Last ball. Thank you. 
the LS6 is in the cradle, ready to really get like a final assembly done and get it back on here. So we'll get the water pump on tomorrow and the headers, which honestly, pretty quick job. I don't have exhaust gaskets, I thought I did. And here we are, nighttime with no uh, gaskets. So unfortunately, we had to stop there, otherwise I would have done them before they even went into the mounts. But hey, it was easy like this. Um, so we're down to like basic finishing stuff, like I said, two bolts, three bolts, holding on the uh, power steering pump and bracket, and we can pull the lift plate off, hook up the knock sensors, retighten everything basically. I just need to go over everything and check it all. And we should be home free. I'd like to do the sway bar and links all of that because they're really, really, really bad. Maybe tomorrow after I get the water pump and the headers on, we can even get the torque tube on with uh, you know the flex plate and all that good stuff. And it's ready to stab after that. Just one more day to wrap this thing up. Honestly, you could do all this in like two days pretty easily if you work nonstop and had two people so you can get you know under the car. That's the fun part that you wanna have two people for. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchjr.com for cool shirts, just like this. And please, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. Scott, how many times did you die in Fortnite in the last few hours? Uh, <laughs> 16 maybe? <laughs> I'm impressed. 16. What's the KD ratio? Um, I'm running. I'm, I'm in the store and I'm storming. I'm running away. Okay. How and many times did you win? You got second place once, which is insane. Didn't you get second place twice? Oh, no. you did? That was insane. Oh yeah, I did it twice. All right. You gotta go to Academy and get a new chair because you wore it out. You got money for that? Nope.